My project is about what material absorbs oil the best. Sponge, cotton, polypropylene foam, or wood chips. And we filled a measuring cup with 300 milliliters of oil, a bottle and 100 milliliters of oil. And we put a, one cup of the absorbent into the measuring in, into the measuring cup filled with oil in the bottle. And the, then we took, and then after two minutes, we took the absorbent out with a slotted spill and measured the results. Polyacoping foam was absorbed the most oil by a lot. Oops, this is Allison Reinick. She's going to tell me a little bit about her project. Allison, what's your project all about? Um, my project is about what is the best guinea pig bedding. I wanted to do this project because my family has tried various types of guinea pig bedding in the past two years since we've had our guinea pigs. Um, some of them smelled really bad and some of them took longer than we wanted it to take to clean. And some of them, and so we just wanted to see what was the best guinea pig bedding. And for my experiment, we changed three different types of bedding, towels, fleece, and critter care, every three days, and we recorded them on um, the, the odor, the happiness of the guinea pig, the cost, and the time to clean. And the happiness, we judged off of five different criteria, how, how comfortable the guinea pigs were, were they lounging or resting comfortably, were they making, were they did they have signs of um, unhappiness, or did they seem to be happy? And the odor of the bedding, the how clean the bedding was, and how dry the bedding was. And after and after we recorded all our data, we found that Critter Care was the best bedding. This is Natalie Robinson. Her project is Glowing Liquids. Natalie, tell me about your project. I was on the and I wanted to know which one grew more water, milk, and vegetable oil, and see which one grew more. And I had to get all my materials, which was highlighters, black light, milk, water, and vegetable oil. And we cut the highlighters open, and there's this tube that holds all the highlighter ink and we stuck it in there for an hour and then we took it out and we put the black light and shined it on it and we got milk and then we did it again and then we got milk and then we did it our third time and we got water. Okay. Hey, this is Ashley Vandenboom, and she's going to tell me a little bit about her project. Ashley, what was your project about? My project was about figuring out if the voltage of an electromagnet affected the strength. And um, for my test, I got a power supply, a gauss meter, and a multimeter so I could do my experiment. And my dad really helped with that because he got all the equipment I needed from his work. And um, first, we made our electromagnet and we made it by winding coils around a plastic bobbin and then at the end we put a steel rod in the middle of it and then we hooked the two ends of the wires up to the power supply and we hooked the power supply to the multimeter and then um, we taped our magnet down to the table so it didn't move and uh, then we placed our gauss meter a quarter of an inch away from the electromagnets to, so it could measure the strength. And what we did for the experiment was we adjusted the voltage to 0, 0.0 volts and increased by 0.5 volts every time all the way up until we finished at 6.0 volts. And I noticed that my results always went up by like 20 volts each time, and I thought that was pretty cool. And then I made a line graph and a table to show my results, and my hypothesis at the beginning was if the voltage increases, then the strength will also increase. And the showing of my results 
that conclusion was correct because the voltage, every time we increase the voltage of the electromagnet, the strength also increased.